Hello and welcome to the fourth day of ExpoLingua Online Spring Edition. I'm Ekaterina from ExpoLingua team and we are very happy to welcome you all at our special panel Behind the Scenes Part 4. Uh, today you will meet Shona from Perfect English Grammar who will host the interviews, Keith from English Speaking Success, Lucrezia from Learn Italian with Lucrezia, and Luca Lampriello, the creator of the channel with the same name. And um, we are waiting for maybe this next guest, uh, Anna, Anna from English Like a Native. Let's see. Uh, so now I'm giving over the e-microphone to Shona and enjoy the event. Thank you so much. So uh, the first thing I'd like to ask you guys today is, could you tell us a little bit about when and why you started your channels? So could we start with Luca, please? With me? Okay. Yes. So um, when did I start my channel? It was the 22nd of May, 2008. I still remember exactly the date because I remember that it was totally random. I was in Barcelona, I was doing the Erasmus and I told myself I had been watching some videos on YouTube of people speaking, uh, you know, multiple languages. And I told myself I speak, I speak a few and I just like grabbed the very first thing I had there, which was uh, a very low quality camera. And I shot my first video. And it was the best decision I've made in my life. I didn't know it at the time. Uh, and then after that, you know, the, the, the channel got uh, got big, bigger and, and bigger. And why? As, as I said, it was just a pure a desire, out of pure desire of sharing my knowledge and my passion. Uh, at the beginning, it was just like I was making video after video talking about how I learn languages. And then I figured out that, um, you know, it just, it just became a job. I... I was, uh, I have a degree in electronic engineering, but I ended up doing something completely different. And I still have to, to this day, I still have to thank uh, YouTube and all you lovely people for making that happen. In a nutshell, that's my story. Awesome, thank you, Luca. Could we have Keith? Yeah, sure. Well, I, I think I first began on YouTube as, as a personal channel many, many years ago when I was doing my master's degree in, in digital education. And it was just to share videos with other students on the course. But the actual channel I have now, the English speaking success, I think, <laughs> I'm not sure like Luca of the date, but it was the the very end of 2018, I think. Um, and that's when I began posting videos there. At that time, I was teaching one to one online, and I was doing some group classes as well. And it was actually just a way of kind of consolidating some of the material for the students to give them um, maybe a summary of words that I'd, I'd done, et cetera. And then very quickly, I, I realized, I think, the potential of um, the video format for learning. And I thought, wow, this is, is very, very powerful. And I basically saw other teachers on YouTube with like millions of, of views. And I thought, wow. I think I would like to do that. I would like to, as Lucas said, kind of share what I know with much, many, many more students. Um, and so I began posting more videos, um, trying to gauge what students would be interested in, not, not just my students, but students I didn't know. <laughs> and that's actually a big challenge. But then, um, yeah, it began to develop and to grow. And uh, over the last two years, it's just been fantastic. It's, it's had great growth. and. Uh, I think it's just enabled me to reach more students around the world. And that's, that's the big thing for me. Awesome. Thank you. And Lucrezia. Yes. So I started my YouTube channel nine years ago. And when I was a translation student at the university and I started, I started my channel because I wanted to do something different. And at the time I didn't really think that it would become a, a, a job like it is today and I wanted to just mm, share my vision of my country and my vision of my culture and just say like just teach the language basically but I didn't realize that it would become such a big thing later on um, so I started because I wanted to do something different from my everyday university student life. Yeah, perfect. Hi, Anna. Hi, I'm so sorry I'm late. I, I got confused with the times. I, I was on British time. I was thinking it was one o'clock, sorry. Are you good to answer the first question, which is um, when and why did you start your channel? 
Um, okay, so my channel kind of um, organically turned into what it is now. Um, I started out initially as a teacher teaching things like drama and, and performance based stuff and um, a lot of my children in one of the schools I was teaching had um, difficulties with lisps and, uh, and speech-based difficulties so I started teaching elocution as an option in the school I was in and from there just worked a lot with speech therapy issues and then that kind of amalgamated into teaching accents for people who wanted accents whether it was actors working in TV and they wanted to speak with a Manchester accent or a Liverpool accent or um, with an RP accent. So I was working purely on accent and, and pronunciation then. And then more and more of my students were non-natives and wanted uh, more help with things that were grammar based. And I thought, oh, okay, well, I better start learning then. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I started teaching um, English in my own way because I don't come from a I, the normal kind of uh, teaching background when it comes to languages. Um, so I just tried to teach in my own way and people seem to like that. So, uh, so yeah, then, then my channel became what it is today, which is purely language based really. Awesome, thank you. Um, and for myself, I've, I also started a very long time ago in October, 2007. Um, my channel is mainly a blog. Um, and I just started writing much like Keith in order to uh, help my students at the time with the grammar that I was teaching them. So instead of like bringing all the worksheets with me because I was doing private tuition all around London at that time, I thought I'll just put it on the internet. And uh, it just very gradually turned into something else. And now like Luca, I couldn't be more grateful um, that it's worked out so well and I've, um, managed to make this into my job, which is incredible. All right, thanks guys. So our second question is a little bit more kind of nuts and bolts. What exactly do your students or your um, audience learn with you and how do you organize your content? So do you have like weekly uh, videos? Um, how do you uh, like schedule it and decide when you're going to do things? Um, and could we have uh, Keith first this time? Oh, right. Okay. Um, so I teach English for exam preparation for the IELTS speaking test, um, specifically the speaking module. So it's all about speaking skills. Um, how do I organize this stuff? Well, from a, a weekly schedule. So I put out a, a published or a recorded video every Saturday um, that starts on Sunday with the idea. I write it on Monday, I record it on Tuesday, believe it or not, very methodical, Wednesday start <laughs> the editing and it comes out on Saturday. Um, and then every Thursday um, at 10 o'clock in the morning in Spain time, because I live in Spain, I do a live session um, and I go live with students there. I, I think the organization of the, the actual content, I mean, for me, there are different things. There is, there's tips about how to do the exam. So I have I basically use playlists as well. So I have playlists for tips. I have playlists for vocabulary, playlists for grammar, and then different parts of the test. And I guess that's how I kind of organize the content. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Um, Lucrezia. So I teach um, grammar and vocabulary for Italian as a second language. And I also try to include real, uh, real life language um, in form of vlogs. So going around the city, just talking about what I do, what I see around me. Um, now it's a bit difficult with vlogs around the city, but <laughs> I hope I will be able to resume them very soon. Um, I typically post three to uh, two to three times a week. Um, and it really depends on my mood as well, because um, like at the moment, I'm very um, confused about the things I have to do. And I, I'm really, honestly, I'm really bad at content um, scheduling. So sometimes I end up on the publishing day, filming and editing the video and then publish it. So yeah, that's about it. 
at the moment. Um, I always try to be more organized, but I don't know why I just can't be more organized. <laughs> I'll have to ask for tips later. <laughs> it's all good. I think everyone struggles with that, right? Um, how about you, Anna? Uh, so I, I have two little ones. I've got a four-month-old and a two-year-old. And before I had children, I was very much kind of uh, uh, the same as what you just said. Um, I just do it off off the cuff. I would edit the same day as I upload, um, just do it as and when. And now as a mum, I don't really have the luxury of that kind of time. So I'm really, really... Um, stuck for time I have maybe a couple of hours a day four days of the week um, to do everything um, run my websites and do all the different platforms that we now have to do um, and responding to students and that kind of thing so I am super organized as organized as I can be I will bulk film um, so I think getting a team involved is one of the best things you can do as you if you're kind of a language influencer um, and I get people to help me with writing scripts. So I'll provide the ideas, tell them kind of what I want. They'll do the um, bulk of the writing for me. Then I'll check it, adjust it, upload it to an auto queue, and then film maybe eight videos in one session if I have a mega morning filming session, um, and then send it to an editor. And the editor will then edit that for me. And then I also, um, I don't have her at the moment, but I also tend to work on and off with a social media manager who I will pass on to her um, uh, lots and lots of posts, um, if they're text-based posts. And um, I signed her up to a scheduling um, website. So she will then schedule and help just write out, do with all the padding, write out the posts for me and schedule all those posts to go out for me. So a lot of my social media will just happen on an organize. It will have been scheduled months before and many of my videos even now you'll see my videos and I'm heavily pregnant and some of them my videos are still from when I was pregnant with my first child from a couple of years ago I've just got loads and loads of content that I just decide when to put out um, it does mean that you can't be as reactive and if you decide if, if, if the algorithms change with YouTube or you see your students aren't really enjoying a certain length of video you then think well I've got 40 videos that follow this style that I can't now just dump. So you can either decide to try and adjust it or just put it out anyway, because it's all good value. It's just whether or not it will be delivered in the same way to your audience. Um, so yeah, I, at the moment we'll release um, a recorded video usually on a Sunday and I will do maybe a short video um, because they've got YouTube shorts at the moment, which is one minute and that will go out on a Wednesday or Thursday. So midweek. And um, I tr I'm trying to now reintroduce live sessions, usually on a Friday, every two weeks. But it really depends on what my children are being like, <laughs> whether I can cope. Yeah, totally. I completely hear you on this. Um, but it sounds like you're now mega organized, which is wonderful. Um, how about you, Luca? So uh, my channel is about uh, fundamentally learning how to learn. So it's not a, about a specific language and uh, it's more like uh, how to use your brain, you know, how to figure out how to use your brain to learn grammar patterns or pronunciation. Occasionally I also do uh, specific languages like how to learn Russian or how to learn German. But fundamentally, this is my niche, learning how to learn languages in this case. And as far as uh, organization is concerned, um, you know, Lucrezia said that she has a hard time putting con the content out there. No, that she said she, she's bad yeah. at producing content. But the reality is she puts like three videos out there every week while I myself uh, am struggling a little bit with that recently. Um, I actually have a team. So uh, like Anna, for example, now I've learned to organize my stuff better. Um, so for example, scripting, I divide my days, uh, let's say into themes. Uh, for example, Monday is scripting day. Uh, Tuesday is filming day. So, and then I work uh, in batches of videos. So I, I film 10 videos in one day uh, because that's, that's much, uh, that's much more efficient in general. Now I'm, you know, I'm, 
starting, I'm figuring out a few other things because I'm changing a little bit. My, my business is shift, not shifting, but changing is expanding. So I need to, uh, to, to be efficient with my time. And I want to shoot, it's a different life, uh, let's say style with the videos. Uh, so, um, but hopefully from April or, or May, 2021, I want to go back to, you know, uh, publishing one video every Thursday. And now I'm using shorts. I don't know if you guys have heard about shorts. Uh, this is the new trend on YouTube. So I, I produce one short every, I just, this morning I shot five of them on my beautiful balcony. And I, uh, so every Monday I have one short, I publish one short and then every Thursday, hopefully, uh, moving forward, I'm gonna, uh, you know, just, um, uh, publish one uh, one official, I would say, normal video of 10, 15 minutes. And then um, every month I want to do a live q and I I started two months ago and I see that there's hundreds and hundreds of people. So I, I really, and I like it. I love it. The energy from you guys is great, even from, you know, this chat. And, um, and that's more or less what I'm doing. Uh, so uh, business, business wise, I'm reorganizing things because we're all YouTubers here, but we all have, there's more. Uh, to it that meets the eye, you know, as they say, you have courses, etc. So, um, you know, I'm I'm rebuilding the business, and this has an impact on the way I'm, I'm also producing videos, etc. But uh, as I said before, the the first decision of making of publishing one YouTube video some 12 years ago was the best decision I've ever made in my whole life. So I'm pretty happy to this day that I made that decision in general. And um, just one thing that I wanted to add for for uh, you know people who produce uh, language content or they have a business. Um, if you ever decide, any of you here on, on the chat, uh, to create a channel, I think that the first thing you have to tell yourself is that you have to make it happen. My, my first video, if you watch it, it's just a disaster. I just I got a hell, you know, I got hold of the, of the first camera I had, like video and audio, but people appreciated that I did it. So if you were ever in doubt and thinking, should I do it? Should I, like perfectionism, this perfectionism thing that we all have, just do it. You will get better at it. Uh, because things get better, technology get better, and, and, and you get better at producing videos. So, and, and you know, uh, Lucrezia, I think you're doing an amazing job. When you say that you're not good at, con you're bad at, at content, maybe, maybe you think that's, that's, that, that's your idea, that's your impression, but I think that maybe if you get a little bit more organized with the energy that you have, you can make 10, video, 10 videos a week, you know? Yeah, I struggle with scheduling things. So, for example, um, if I think about publishing a video about, I don't know, something on Monday, but then on, on Sunday night, I hate um, the idea that I had. So I have to change everything. <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, one, one thing I wanted to, uh, to, one other thing I wanted to say, maybe to look at say, Lucas, do you have some people who help you with, for example, editing? Because editing, uh, just one example, editing is, it's just- I know, it takes up a lot of time. Um, I've had a few experiences with editors. Um, I don't know what I think about it because um, I don't know, maybe I'm not very good at explaining my um, ideas on how the video should look like. So I have to improve on that. But then I find myself always correcting um, spelling um, and things that I don't know. Um, you have to find a good editor and then stick stick to yeah. him or her um, because if you find someone you can delegate you, if you can delegate some tasks I, I'm I'm always in awe of what you of how you produce stuff because if you're just one person having a YouTube channel is a full time job mm -hmm. if you do if you want to take it to the next level if you don't have a team around it's got to be tough you know sometimes I go like oh my god I have to make a YouTube video <laughs> <I> <laughs> as much as I love the result and the the energy about that sometimes it's just low energy you say you you know what I just want to slouch on the couch sprawl on the couch. The, the whole day and read some stuff. But then I think about the energy that, you know, the, the appreciation uh, the people have and the nice words. And I think I got to go back on track, but here's my suggestion. Uh, look, let's if you can find someone and you will invest some time in, in organ organizing things a little bit better, it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be even better than it is right now. I would say. Can I, can I add in hey. something here? Um, so I've had lots of trouble with editors um, for years. I've, I've, um, had different editors all editors will have a trial period they'll all need to learn your style so you'll have this kind of difficult period with all of them um, I now work through a company called vidchops 
www.thepeopleshop.com and they are a group of editors and you'll work with one you'll give them some time to kind of learn your style and if you're not comfortable then you can they'll pass you on to a new editor um, and there's a bunch of editors there all trying to like quality assure everything that goes out so your ed your edits being looked at by a number of people um I, I don't get any commission for them or anything by the way it's just <laughs> I have had a genuine genuinely good experience with them I've been with them for about a year and a half now and um I've been through a number of different editors within that company not because they weren't good but because when, a, when an editor gets really good then they're going to go on and work with more and more people and have less and less time so it, you're going to be you're going to find it hard to stick with one editor for life um, unless you're paying them a great amount of money like the more and more they they improve their, their, their worth is going to go up they're going to want more money from you so um, I, I found working with Chops really great and um, as long as you understand that you need to give them that time to learn your style um, then I think it really is a game changer when you get to a certain level and you've got a certain amount of things to do having someone take that edit off your hands so I know what it's like an edit can take you a whole day sometimes longer to to do um, and the thing is the book will always stop with you so I've had so many occasions when an editor will make a typo or pull out some text that uh, and just make it a grammatical error um, and I haven't thoroughly concentrated when watching it through to, send, to sign it off and put it out there and then people have gone there's a typo or there's a grammar error and I go oh my god no what am I going to do um, and it just happens you know it happens but you have to appreciate that you are the final the final person that's going to go through so you will always have to give notes double check everything um, before it finally goes out but the bulk of the work will be taken off your hands and it will make a huge difference um, if there... I, sorry, I think we have to move on to the next question. <laughs> but thank you so but much. Thank you so much for all your <laughs> tips. <laughs> um, so could I ask, um, where do you get your inspiration from? So do you take feedback from your audience or do you find it in your head? Um, how do you decide what videos uh, to make? And let's start this time uh, with Anna. Um, hi again. Um, I often, um, I ask my audience a lot of the time and I'm not sure what they are enjoying and what they like. Um, I do find that the most popular videos and the most popular content in terms of what they say in the comments doesn't tend to be reflected in the actual performance of the video, which is really interesting. So even though my students might be saying, we love this, this is great, please do more of this, it might be actually my worst performing video. So for some reason, there's a disconnect there, which I still haven't yet discovered. Um, so I think it's it's important for me to please my core audience, people who watch all of my videos, who are regularly the first people to click on and watch all the way through. You know, they're the most important to me. But then obviously you have to also think about the health of your channel and the growth of your business. So you have to think, well, what's going to also uh, perform well in terms of the algorithm? It's a, a fine balance to strike. So I tend to also look at um, my my peers what people in, in my niche are doing, how, um, if they're coming up with new ideas, how well they're performing and, and try and take inspiration from that. Um, and then also I teach some private lessons as well and things that will come up time and time again with my private students. I go, do you know what? I hear this a lot. I'm going to make a video about this because obviously this is an issue that many of my students struggle with. Um, I'm sure it'll be helpful to make a video. So it's a, a bit of everything really. Thank you. Um, how about you, Keith? Um, I've had the, exactly the same experience, Anna. I mean, exactly the same. Lots of students say, and I ask students, they say, we want this, we want this. And then I do that. And often that's the, the worst video, as in per views, people don't watch it. And I, I think sometimes it's because it's very specific and it's very focused on one thing. So there's a narrower audience. I found the very, very general things. I mean, I once did a video on how to introduce yourself. I thought that's so simple, but I'll, I'll do it anyway. The biggest video by far. So 
I don't know. I, I do. I do also look at students and, and um, look at the comments they make. Um, I take my main inspiration from my weekend walk, right? So I go for a walk and I listen to the radio, <laughs> show my age, listen to my podcasts. Um, and just getting out and about gives me inspiration to think of different things. Um, I look at other people, what they're doing on YouTube and not necessarily language teachers, but, you know, I watch um, investment videos. I watch Mr. Beast. I watch cooking videos and I watch ASMR and I, I just pick up little things and think, oh, that's really interesting. And, and almost maybe around content or editing or the way we present the ideas might come from different sources of videos. Um, so I guess all of those kind of bundled together give me the, the kind of inspiration that fortunately I, I, I always get. I, I very rarely find myself thinking, what am I going to do this weekend? There's always almost too many ideas coming out and uh, trying to get them done in time. So, yeah, that's that's what I would say. That's fabulous. Mm. Um, how about you, Luca? So uh, mainly, um, uh, as Keith was saying, for example, when I take a walk, I always, uh, a lot of ideas come to my mind. I always have a post, like I always have a little notebook where I scribble on my ideas when I take a walk and the best ideas actually when I run, I don't know why, but you know, may, maybe movement uh, <laughs> fosters uh, more uh, quality thinking. Um, and uh, that's the, that's the first one. So when, whenever I want to, you know, share uh, whenever I have an interesting idea, I just want to share it with the world and I go for interest. This is what interests me and hopefully it's going to interest, uh, it's going to be interesting for my audience. The second thing is I've been, um, you know, doing also with my team is a little bit of study or trying to understand and figure out how the YouTube algorithm works because uh, the YouTube algorithm has its, you know, perks and perks. Um, and But it's important to understand how it is also how, for example, titles and thumbnails are so important. Uh, when it comes to uh, a video, you can make an incredible video, but if the title and the thumbnail uh, are not very good, then it's not going to take off. Uh, and um, and then, um, you know, I, I asked the audience. I asked the audience. I've learned to systematically ask the audience uh, on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And then I go through that and I see the recurring patterns and what people ask uh, the most. And then I make like, a, it's a, a crossover between the YouTube algorithm and actually what the audience asks. Because normally, you know, if they don't cross over, sometimes as Anna and Keith, they were saying, you might make, uh, you know, the, the video that your audience is requesting, but it's not necessarily going to be popular. There's a lot of, you have to factor in a lot of, a lot of things into whether a YouTube video is gonna, you know, be successful or not. So it's always a combination of these three things um, that, you know, make me decide which, which videos I'm gonna publish. Oh, thank you. Um, and Lucrezia? Um, I always try to write down questions that I get in the comments. And then I take, I also take inspiration from uh, content that has nothing to do with language learning or teaching and like bloggers from other countries, for example, because I watch a lot of um, bloggers <laughs> and because I am really interested in um, lifestyle um, in, in the world. Um, also, I try to write down ideas that come up and I always try to balance what people want me to talk about and what I want to talk about. So I try to balance that. Cool, thank you. So for me, I don't actually publish content um, super often now because I've got such an amount already on my website. Um, but I do publish content to my email list and I run challenges and so on. So a lot of those ideas come from either something I just haven't talked about yet. So there's kind of, you know, English grammar is kind of finite. Um, and so if there's a bit that I've missed, then I want to cover all the bits, um, but also questions that we get. So like, I think all of you, um, we get questions all the time um, and if there's something that we haven't talked about at all then we're going to answer that question um, and things that I just come across and think are going to be useful so there's that too. okay guys so uh, 
we're going to leave five minutes at the end for questions from the audience. So if the audience would like to ask any, um, now's your moment um, in the chat and I'll try and come to them at the end. Um, in the minutes before that, uh, a question that's really, I don't know, I think to a lot of us really means a lot is what has your channel meant for your life? So how has it affected you? Um, maybe for good and bad. Um, let's, uh, could we start with Lucrezia? Yes, um, that's a big question. Um, well, I'm really grateful for the channel I have and for the support of all Italian students around the world. Um, so that's, I mean, the best thing is that I receive messages from students who have passed their certification exams and they're so grateful for my videos and that just warms my heart. I'm so happy about that. Um, but there is also a bad, a negative side to being online and you get opinions you didn't ask for about, about things that have nothing to do with what you speak about in the video. Um, and that, that's annoying, I think. And sometimes I also get comments that try to make me feel insecure about what I said in the video, what I do in life. And yeah, that's the ne negative side of it all. But I have a few messages screenshotted on my phone. So when I feel a bit low, I just go back to those messages from my viewers and um, they brighten up my day. Awesome. And I, I love that. That's a good <laughs> idea. Because, um, yeah, I think uh, it's natural that when we're visible online, not all the feedback we get is good, right? Um, how about you, Anna? Um, so for me, Previous to being a teacher and alongside being a teacher, um, I trained as an actress. Sorry, my baby's in the background. Um, I trained as an actress and um, as an actor, you don't really have much uh, financial security. You don't have a pension, you don't get sick pay, you don't get maternity pay, all these kind of things that you get from normal employment in the UK. Um, and so it was always a bit nerve wracking if I ever got ill or needed to take time out and I was scared about having children and what that would mean for my, you know, paying the mortgage and that kind of thing. Um, coming across YouTube and, and the idea of making YouTube a business um, gave me that kind of financial freedom. That's not to say that YouTube is um, a huge money spinner because it's not. I think some people, it depends on your channel. Everyone's income is different from YouTube. It depends on your audience, the length of time they're watching your video, um, but it's not for everyone. It's not a huge money spinner, but it provides opportunities. Um, and it does allow me to earn income while I'm taking time out. So when I've had, had my children, I've been able to spend a few months just focusing on my family and my recovery and not worrying. So that financial freedom is fantastic. Um, it's obviously provided me with a lot of um, self-confidence. I was a very nervous person before. I do care greatly about what people think. And as was mentioned, people comment on everything. They're with me to learn and yet they'll comment all the time on my lack of or the amount of makeup I'm wearing, my clothing choices, good or bad, um, my background, my um, any mistakes that I make. Because we all do make mistakes and people will gladly shoot you down if you give them the opportunity. Um, and so I kind of learned to just go, do you know what? it doesn't matter, I can't please everybody. All I need to do is please myself and make sure I'm happy with what I'm doing and I'm happy with how I look and how I'm dressed. And if you want to take the value that I'm providing, then that's up to you. And if you don't, then I'm not worried about it. Um, so it, it really get, provided me a lot of self-confidence and acceptance of myself and acceptance of the fact that I do make mistakes and I'm not, um, I'm not you know, I don't know, 100% wonderful all the time. That's fine. None of us are. Um, and that in turn gave me the confidence to then branch out and set up my own business, my own websites, um, my own courses, which I never would have done before because I would have had so much self-doubt. And so for me, the YouTubing thing, 
as stressful as those really negative comments that do come in can be, and that pressure to continuously make content, overall the experience is very, very positive. Thank you. Um, how about you, Keith? Um, it's a good question. I, I, I guess, as Lucrezia said, for me that there's positive and, and negative. I, I think it's been very, very positive. On the one hand, it, I changed my career. I mean, I, I've always been in education. I've been a teacher, teacher trainer. And the most recent years, I was educational manager of training projects. And then in 2017, I decided to leave all of that and leave quite a stable, steady, secure job um, to go on my own um, with the goal of really looking to innovate in online education and to reach much, you know, many, many more students around the world. And YouTube has enabled that. I mean, it's it's amazing what you can do on YouTube. And, and I'm sometimes flabbergasted at the, the comments I get from people who learn so much from the videos. And I think, really? I mean, it's just a short video. How, how can you learn so much? And, and it, it's really opened my eyes to understanding online learning a lot deeper. Um, I'm not sure about financial security. Financial freedom, yes. I mean, as Anna said, it's, it's not as... It's not the big money spinner I think people think it is. And I do wonder at times, is this just going to fall apart, right? It doesn't give me a sense of security, um, but it, it does give me a sense of opportunity, definitely. I think that's great. Um, the bad side for me is the I, I spend so much time being sucked into this whole social media world of YouTube, Facebook, Clubhouse and Instagram that, um, it, it, I mean, quite honestly, it's partly my age. It affects my eyesight. So my eyesight's getting worse and I just spend so much time in front of screens. And that's the, the downside, I think, of it. It's, it's, it has that negative impact. But overall, you know, without a doubt, it's um, been a big, big game changer for me. Huge. I'm really, really happy about it. Awesome. Thank you, Keith. Uh, and Luca? Well, for me, it's the same. It's, it's been, a, as I said, um, when I started making, when I, when I made my first YouTube video in, uh, on the 22nd of May, um, 2008, it changed everything. Um, I have a degree in electronic engineering, but I ended up being, uh, you know, uh, a language coach. So YouTube basically allowed me to, um, you know, to have a website. I have a YouTube channel. I have a, a website. I work. It gave me financial freedom for sure, because now I give one-on-one -on -one sessions. I'm building live courses, like both live courses and evergreen courses. So I'm building an entire business that, uh, you know, hinges on, revolves around my YouTube channel. And it changed me in so many ways. It's not just about the financial freedom. I didn't do this for the money. I didn't do this for the glory. I do this because I genuinely believe that if you have something, if we, we were all born with some sort of talent, and um, if, you, if, I, if I have the talent of learning or teaching for languages or, you know, uh, showing and, and sharing the, the beauty of language learning, uh, I'm, very, I'm very proud that I can do this uh, every day on a, like, you know, on a worldwide uh, audience or stage. Um, so I, I'm, I'm grateful for everything, uh, for every single moment I spend on YouTube and, uh, every, you know, the decision I made, uh, you know, first and foremost to make that, that, uh, that video, fateful video, as far as, uh, you know, negative, uh, things, um, a couple of, a couple of comments, I've been reading a lot about, you know, stoicism and the, the, this philosophy of being a stoic. And uh, recently I read this passage that struck me is that people are going, no matter what you do, no matter how good you are, people are, some people will always have, like they will criticize, they will find some, somehow, some way to criticize. But you have to, uh, every time that you look at a comment, you can decide whether that comment is gonna sting you, let that comment sting you in a way, or think maybe, you know, this is a reflection of the person who left the comment. Most, more often than not, this reflects, this is just a direct consequence of people leaving comments. They're a little bit frustrated. They have their own problems. So I have to say, I've been lucky enough that I, 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 I got some flack, uh, but not that much. But in general, when it's, you know, when I, when people leave comments, there's even people who made videos about me saying, oh, this guy's a fraud. He doesn't speak foreign languages. You know, it's funny. I, I watched one, but I always take it, you know, first with a grain of salt. And then to me, um, I, I have grown a th thick skin, so to speak. I don't, I don't really care, you know? Uh, and I believe that, um, if I make a video, I always try to give the best that I have in me. Then it's up to people to decide whether I'm a fraud and whether this content is good or, or not. 
But uh, it all depends on uh, the, the attitude that you develop. But I, I completely understand uh, Lucrezia and everyone else saying here that, you know, the, the way we're bio biologically built, we tend to see danger in bad comments. You know, we tend to value and cherish other people's opinions. So if someone tries to put you down, you notice that among 10,000 positive comments, that one negative uh, comment, unfortunately, stands out. But, uh, you know, also, fortunately, you learn to... Um, you know, to see things as for, for what they are. They're just opinions of people who, you know, they, they, they might be a little bit frustrated. They have their own problems, so to speak, but their problem is not my problem. My problem is just to do the best that I can to give uh, what I have in me, you know, my vision and to share my vision and, and what I believe, uh, you know, I, I believe I'm a very, I'm an optimist. I believe in the best of humanity. So I tend to ignore the worst of humanity and I try to focus on, on the best of humanity. Thank you, Luca, thank you. Um, so very quickly, my answer to that is that I've got incredible freedom from this freedom of time, particularly I get to hang out with my kids. I get to, in normal times, uh, travel. Um, I get to meet all these incredible people. Um, and I've also grown a lot from uh, growing my channel. I thought I would be a teacher my whole life. And instead I've ended up doing all these different things and learning all these different things, which has been wonderful. Okay, guys, um, we uh, kind of need to finish because there's only one minute left. Um, the theory was we were all to say something nice to the audience. Um, so, uh, my message for the audience is if you are thinking about starting something, you should just start it. Um, because these channels, they grow from nothing and they change your life. Um, and it goes for almost anything you want to do, I think. Um, do you guys have just one or two words, uh, one or two sentences, um, a message to the audience? Um, I, and I feel right. like Luca probably has one. <laughs> No, I just say, uh, just, just believe in yourself. You know, when it comes to language learning, when it comes to building a business, you have to believe yourself, but in yourself. But in order to believe in yourself, you have to make things happen because motivation comes from action. When you do something, you doubt yourself. Most of the time, it's just in your head. Do things, you will see that amazing things are going to happen if you put yourself up there and if you believe in what you're doing. Yeah, and I'll, I'll go off the back of that as well and say, you don't have to be perfect. You learn so much by doing, you used to learn so much by making mistakes and audiences really genuine, genuinely appreciate watching you be human. So just get started and learn as you go. So true. Um, Lucretia, do you have something? Um, well, thank you all so much for listening to us uh, today. And yes, as um, Anna said, Luca said, just uh, believe in yourself. And if you want to do something, just go ahead and do it. Don't think about perfectionism because, um, I mean, it stops you from doing things that you love. Totally. Uh, and Keith? Yeah, I, I would add the same. I think, you know, you're, you, sometimes you're waiting to be ready, but you're never, ever ready, ever. So you just have to, you know, jump in and do it and um, and just be yourself. I think people need what you have to offer. And, and as Luca said, to kind of believe in yourself. You're never an imposter, right? You're just you. You're always you. And people need what you've got to offer. Just go and do it. Awesome. Uh, and guys, thank you so much to all our panellists. And thank you so much to all the audience. It's been wonderful to be able to, like, talk uh, not about grammar, um, but also about all of this stuff with all of you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you, Thanks, nice Thank to you see. everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye.